Hello everybody, welcome back to Mantle Farm for another one of our weekly apiary updates with myself Josh and Roger. If you've got any questions or things you would like us to feature then pop them into the comments section below and we'll do our best to answer any questions and to feature any requests in future videos. To the apiary, past Gerald. He likes to likes to help out with the beekeeping where he can. Yep. Right. So, starting off as we did last week Take with your log off. little was it six frame poly nuke? Yep. With your bees in. Well, a four frame poly nuke with four my frames. bees with a but new queen. Yes. Sort of a just in case. And the intention is that we're going to move these into the WBC box, which is why they're standing on a WBC floor at the moment. When I did buy the last couple of new queens in, which was several seasons ago now, um, they were buckfast. Right. Bees, which are mostly the Italian. I mean, they're, they're slightly mongrel, but they're mostly Italian. Yeah. Um, so they are mostly sort of goldy coloured. Mm. Um, the new bees are, you know, again, mostly mm -hmm. yellowish, but a lot of brown as well. So they are a mix. Um, Sun's but come out. I actually tend to prefer the, the lighter coloured ones because in my experience they're better behaved from my point of view. Yeah. Um, you know, other people are determined that they will only have black bees, which is fine, providing they don't have neighbours. So um, they tend to be... Because they tend to, well, in my experience, they tend to be more lively, more rushing about, more... Yeah. More, there's the queen. I mean, she's actually fairly dark, but she's she is, giving yeah. birth to a lot of a lot of uh, quite yellow babies. Mm. Mm, she's doing uh, she's doing all right, isn't she? Yep. Yeah. Do you think so, these need any food at all? From uh, what we've seen so far, again. I don't. I mean, I'm thinking that maybe we should give them a, a couple of pints of syrup and put a, a frame of uh, foundation in so they can. Yeah. Or maybe uh, I mean, as their as the intention was put them in the in the WBC, um, yeah. which already has some drawn frames in it. Right. Maybe we could we'll just put some of those in, or, or get them to start. I'll just go and have a look in a minute and see what's in there. Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously, if they've been eaten by wax moths while we've been building up this colony, um, then. <laughs> <laughs> we won't be putting them in here. But they appear to be collecting plenty of stuff. I mean, there's another lot of nectar and pollen there that they've they've brought in. Oh, yeah. um, so they are foraging, aren't they? So they're foraging quite well. That's a clean frame with, you know, only one spider on the bottom corner. Yeah. Um, they'll clean that up, won't they? They'll clean that up. It's The wire's got a bit rusty, but there's nothing... It's quite a, a nicely drawn frame. It's as well to have the odd spider in it because it keeps the wax, it will eat the wax moths. Mm. Um, with a bit of luck. Um, anyway, so there we are. So I think we'll put that one in, in the yeah. middle somewhere. Give them some syrup. Give the, give the bees somewhere to, the queen somewhere to lay lots of eggs. Um, I mean, I'd like it to be kind of four frames of brood before we put it into the big into the full size box yeah um, just so they're big they're strong enough to so there's enough bees there to draw draw combs out because we're obviously going to need some more um a full complement for a wbc is 10 so we just sort of get into the to the stage in the 
in the development here that the the first few uh, bees are emerging from this new queen. So mm. um, hopefully we'll get a sort of fairly rapid build up from now on. Um, and you know might even be well or might put another frame in next week and then and then uh, you know depending how it goes either that week the next week or the, the week after we'll be putting them into the full size box right okay next one I'll just have a quick gander at those two while I'm here yeah I think we had it We've had a, a few slugs. <laughs> yeah, we have, haven't we? Um, and we've now got wax moss attacking the thing. Oh, oh yeah. You can see the... Yeah. Uh, this is... You can see where the tunnels are. And the, oh, that's a good example of um, evidence these, for wax moss. These are, these are the actual wax moth pupae, I think, in this lot. I can feel them popping as I... There's, there's a wax moth juice. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, I don't know. Maybe we won't use this one. Um, or maybe we will. But there's damage there. I mean, the bees can clear it up. They will dig that out and throw mm. it all the way. But then very often they tend to draw it as either leave it as undrawn or draw it as drone. Uh, cell, so I don't know. We might we might not use that one. Um, but yeah, I mean it, it's you can see they've they've been after the mostly after the pollen really. Um, there was pollen around there, so um, although they're called wax moss, they are in fact um, yeah. How can you put it politely? Garbage moths. Um, <laughs> scavengers they're they're the the only source of protein that is what they need to build their bodies is pollen and or um bees and or you know dead bees um dead brood or or um yeah i think maybe we won't use these or um um the Basically, the 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 rubbish left behind when the when the bees um, finish pupating. Um, yeah, and there's a, a wax moth. Well, there's several there. They tend to do things commonly. Um, mm. Oh yeah. So they particularly they they pupate commonly and they. When they're very young, they 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 sort of stay close together in in gangs. Um, but then they have these individual tunnels that go off and through they work the combs, way um, onto other combs, don't they? And they go onto other combs, and they get in your woodwork, and they're just generally a nuisance. A nuisance. So the bees tolerate them. Well, the bees don't tolerate them much. I mean, if they're... Especially when you start getting this, when you get the silk and everything. If, they're, if they can, they, th they chuck them out. But that's why the wax moths tend to tunnel along the foundation rather than being on the surface of the comb. Because if they're on the surface of the comb, the bees will get them and throw them out. Right. Um, if they're able to avoid that by living in these tunnels, which are um, made of basically uh, caterpillar silk and frass, which is excrement, um, mm. then uh, the bees can't get to them readily. Um, and they tend to be able to stay there. Um, some bees appear to be more tolerant of wax moths than others. Um, 
in my experience, the yellower bees, it may just be they're more prolific, I don't know, but they, they tend to be less tolerant of wax moths than, than darker coloured bees. Um, Interesting. The, the, the colonies that I've seen that have been absolutely full of wax moth have been either declining seriously in bee numbers or small colonies of dark coloured bees that just aren't using most of the combs so the combs are left empty with no bees running about on them and the wax moths get into that bit and then they go up and tend to pupate on top of the well basically between the the cover board the the inner crown and the um, and the top bars of the frames and there comes a time when they actually bow up the the crown board in the middle because it's plywood and the you know the only weight is around the outside and the bees then become so demoralized they give up basically yeah um so yeah it's but i've i've only ever seen that really in in as i said um failing failing colonies or or small colonies of, of black bees um it may well be that because the yellow bees come from a warmer climate basically that they're more they're more used to dealing with wax moths because the wax moths will probably be more prevalent there um, yeah they can't the, the moths can't really live outside um, in exposed situations they they tend you know if you put frames out singly or hang them up singly in the open air then they'll be perfectly safe from wax moths they'll get you know ravaged by bees robbing the any uh, remaining stores out of them or or wasps um chewing them um but they won't get they won't be bothered with wax moths um you put them in a box or in a shed somewhere where they're they're not exposed um and it's dark mm. then they're perfectly happy to to uh, colonise the frames and, and give them a right going over. It's probably worth mentioning to people that are looking to do cut comb, it's well worth freezing your comb if you worry you've got wax moth in the hive because yeah. they can hatch out <laughs> after you've packaged it all up, which yep. isn't too good. <laughs> and you know, we have had people um, at the at the, the autumn show who've put in a frame for extraction as you know it's a class in the show and uh, since they put the frame into the display case a wax moth has hatched and has started to gnaw away at things so you know you have a little pile of frass on the little row of frass along the bottom bars on the under the bottom bars on the bottom of the, the showcase yeah right okay so we're now into the poly national um, first frame had practically nothing in it well nothing in it it's fairly well drawn but it's an old last seasons okay this one we have some nectar yeah and um, quite a few bees and on that side, three bees. <laughs> oh, God, there's nothing not else. Uh, again, it's a it's a new queen, so yeah, they are just sort of building up. Um, now that we're getting somewhere, I'm going to put them to the side so that they're going to be warmer, which will encourage more action on the outside frame. And this one has seal brood there, I can see it from up here. Uh, a lot of seal brood on that side. Um, it's a bit, it's a bit patchy. Mm. Um, Is it laden? Is it hard to see? Yeah, I mean, the, few, ones, oh, the, the, the ones that are, uh, appear to be empty have got larvae in, so it might just be that... <coughs> um, there was pollen or something in those frame in those holes when the when the queen was laying there. I mean, there are bees emerging here. 
Um, these, that's a newly emerged bee. There's one just coming out that was, where is it? There. You just see its head Hang and up. whiskers sticking out. But all of these other ones have got either larvae or eggs in. Um, and they all look healthy. So it's, it, I don't think it's, I'm pretty sure it's not a disease problem. It's, it's just a, a development of, an, of a new colony problem. Another really good frame. Look at that. I mean, when with a full fr full frame this size, you're looking at what about if I remember rightly, about three thousand spaces on each side. Blimey! This is on the fourteen twelve. On the fourteen by twelves. Um, there's the queen right in the middle of the, at the top. Well, yeah. you know the top bar. Sorry. Yeah. Um, so basically, there's probably uh, you know six and a half thousand new bees waiting to come out of this this one frame. Um, you can see how it gets going quickly, can't you? And it's going uh, well. I mean, that's a that's a good sized queen that's obviously well fed um, and can lay a lot of eggs. There's a little queen cup there, which we'll have a look at. Uh, can't see anything in it. No, nothing in it. No, not even polished. Um, so you know, in in another another week's time or so, that's going to be an extra. Well, from what we've seen so far, about twenty thousand bees in here. Um, Which you know, it's it's quite a lot, but it's not huge in in bee terms. Um, <clears throat> but those in turn help incubate more brood. But and then they incubate more brood. They f the this lot that are now running up and down my fingers will be all foraging away, and uh, yeah, the whole thing kind of suddenly takes off. So they are they're on the same number of about the same number of brood frames. Yeah. And there's more, but there's more. I think there's more area of brood than there was last time. Oh yeah. It's just that there. Um, well, last week we saw. I think it was a, a freight. Well, what we were looking at is caps this week. It was eggs and larvae last week. Mm -hmm. You're rattling, Roger. Hmm. <laughs> Comes of having seventy-year-old bones. <laughs> this is why when 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 one is transporting bees, one should take care to make sure the frames are in line with the main direction of travel because otherwise they are rattle like this and squash loads of bees. Okay, put that in there. And let's see what they make of it. Yeah. yeah. Right. On to this little poly this little nuke here. Which is which is the queen that was in that box. This is the small queen. Because she was nice, we didn't like to kill her. I mean, although they all carp on the top bars, they're not flying at us, they just... Come out to see what's going on. up because of the influx of fresh cold air. Hey, you've got some brood. Big patch of sealed brood. Bigish patch of sealed brood. And grubs in the middle. A few larvae. Bit of drone. Is that drone here? Yeah, some that's a drone. Thick drone. There's a few, a few, a few drones on there. over there. One up the top. Um, that might be a sign that the queen is getting a bit old. Um, the fact that it's just sort of odd. In fact, it's just odd ones, and they yeah. appear to be in in worker cells. So yeah, we might be might lose this queen fairly soon. Um, but. These can might be merged with the other one. We can we? merge these with the other one, or whatever. Um, I mean, this was just a contingency, a wasn't contingency it? colony, so that we could maybe we thought get them to do a bit of comb building, which you know, I mean, there they are. That's been in a week. Um, so that's a week, and they built drawn quite, quite well. These eggs. Oh yes, in there. Drift. They'll come out on the camera. 
But yeah, that's good. That's and that's all worker, isn't it? That's all worker. So yeah, they're doing it. They're doing it right. They're not um, not, not horsing a... about. No. And the same on that side. And similar on that side, we've got nice, nicely drawn thing. I'm just going to turn this round because they tend to draw the end nearest the entrance first. So if you turn it round, they'll draw the other end as well and get it all nice and even. Yeah, that's a good tip. Because, you know, I'm not completely silly. And there are quite a lot of bees in here now. Don't move yourself. As we've actually got them doing it, we could even take that partially drawn frame out and mm. put it into the original colony. Yeah. And put another sheet of foundation because they've got lots. There's plenty of bees in here to do to do foundation to draw foundation, and they're making quite a neat job of it. So. Mm. And as they're laying it, it's well been laid up perfectly. Might as well make use of their talent. Mm. Um, see, I mean, even there, there's, although there's, the cells aren't finished, there's the queen. Oh, yeah. Um, there are young larvae in that bit there, and she's obviously laying eggs out here. So she, yeah. Somewhere, and, you know, I mean, you look at that bit, the, the cells are only half depth. Yeah. Um, so where... And she does lay eggs in those, then the bees will actually draw those out to the proper depth. Mm. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's a fairly fairly one-sided frame. That I might just turn that one round so that side is towards the in the middle. If you blow gently on them, um, they cool. move aside. Right, so we've got foundation there, so I'm going to put it between those two. Um, yeah. The fact that there are eggs in it will make it quite attractive to the bees anyway. Yeah. Um, but you can't really put it to the outside because otherwise it just, I don't know, it's, it's a risk. It's a chance that you don't need to take. So we'll just make a hole. And, oh, whoops, slide it in again with the undrawn bit to the front so that they will be able yeah. to draw that completely to the bottom. So, to summarise for people watching, we had a fairly full super, well, they were starting to fill up the super that we had on the week before. So, last week we popped a new super on with some drawn foundation and some undrawn foundation in the top box just in this one and we've put them at 90 degrees which would be classed I guess if it were brewed cold way uh, to encourage them to draw out the comb more evenly and, and that did seem to be working quite successfully when we last checked because they actually did well, they were making quite a good job of it, weren't they? Yep. That was your idea, wasn't it, Roger? Mm. Is that something you've tried before? Uh, or is it, did no, we just sort I'm not, of... not, but it just seemed that it looked like a good idea. Because yeah. they'd kind of drawn one end of the super frames and not the other. And the, the end that they'd, they were not drawn, they'd filled one end of the super frames and not the other. Yeah. And so the bit they'd filled was obviously directly above the brood which because we haven't got a full box of brood frames in here yet I don't think no um, so I thought if we swing it around the other way off you know 180 degrees then they would probably fill out the other end and they yeah more or less did yeah so you know we're getting somewhere with this lot again it's a mani manipulation as well as an inspection so you know that's a perfect example of trying to persuade them that you know what they want to do is what you want them to do as well yes absolutely Right, okay, so. Uh, Take the crown board off, have a little look and see. Yeah. So the top soup, yeah, I was right in what I said, wasn't I? The top soup is the, the newest 
is that the newest one? No, that's old the one with the, the, it's the funny oldest unit. one, isn't it? I think I don't remember now. I might be wrong. <laughs> I can't remember either. I normally we'll put foundation now. or you know stuff that they need to draw directly above the brood. Yeah, we've, this is the one that's about a third or half full. Oh yes, right. Okay. Uh, so what I'm basically doing here is I'm just lifting the frames so that they're not stuck to the box underneath. Ah, um, uh, that's a good idea, yeah, because they do that, don't they? Because they do that. Um, and you lift this off and it pulls um, several frames up from pulls underneath. frames out from the other one and then you get bees trapped because they then drop down again and squash the bees that have run into the nice gap. Um, yeah. Basically, you know, it's just... Well, not I ideal. Don't, don't consider it good beekeeping practice to go around wantonly killing bees for no good reason because you haven't got time to do the job a bit more carefully. And we've got bees all the way through. All seams. All seams. So I'm thinking we might be putting another frame or two of foundation into this one as well. They're a bit different tempered these bees. They're more they seem to sort of get more a bit nervy, aren't they? Excitable, yeah. Uh, there's a queen cell there, which we'll have Ooh. a look at. And... Yeah, it's just... I don't think there's anything in there. No. no. It's a bit of a cluster there. I guess that's all drone, that's is it? That's a bit of drone. Sealed drone brood there. Oh, there's, a, there's a queen one, Roger. Just underneath. Yes. You little monsters. Why do you do this? I think last week we found this was there's a mirror image on the other side last week, a drone in the same place, and mm. there was a queen cell under both of them. Let's <sighs> see whether they've done it again. Get off. Oh yes, yes they have. Look at that. And there's one there. Uh, there's nothing in it. Nope. And where was the other one? I've forgotten. Um, there's one. Oh, yeah. That's, well, that's actually got an egg in it. Oh, it has, yeah. Mm. And the others have got some eggs in as well, haven't they? That one didn't, I don't think. And we, we were saying about the wire, but that actually straddles the wire, doesn't mm. it? Maybe that's why it didn't get laid in. Ah, yes. They've made it, but... Uh... Built it there and didn't think. Right, OK. Well, that's... Um... Hmm. That's a... Yes. Hmm. Hmm. You need to keep an eye on this lot, yeah. apparently. Not seen the Queen. No. Yeah. That's what I'm looking for now. <laughs> yeah, no, this is, I want to see her. Uh, I mean, I know they've got... They've got supers to work on as well, but I'm thinking that I might put two... two sheets in this. Uh, then we've got the full set. I'll leave it for now until we look in these other two nukes, because we might steal one from one of them. Yeah. Put it in. Um, so again, that's what they're for as well, isn't it? That's what they're for. Yeah. Right, that's that and that and that and that and that. Uh, so it just leaves we syrup. We kind of thought we'd give them both a bit of syrup, didn't we? These yeah. Two. So syrup for them, syrup for the end one, yeah. your one. Yeah. Uh, uh, we could do some syrup on the other one that we stole the frame from, but we haven't got another feeder in in, in play at the moment, so... No. We've got the syrup. Who are we going to first? Well, I'll do these two first. Start I can't, can't carry it that far. It'll get lighter as you go It'll further. It'll get lighter that way as I go along, won't it? 
ask you if you've got any final thoughts, Roger, before you get um, oh, um, on yeah. our bees. Um, about our bees, no, they all seem to be doing more or less what we'd expect so far. So um, looking good. Looking good. Yeah. Um, you know, we're getting some, we're getting some decent frames drawn. Um, in a perfect world, I'd like to do them all at the same time mm. for each each brood chamber but if you've got new queens you can't do that because you haven't got enough bees to to work it no. um you know a, a shook swarm only works if you've got a lot of bees yeah um and if you haven't you can't do it so you have to do what you can but at least you know even the the big nasty ones they're mostly on new frames um i think there's about three out of ten that are the older one mm. um, and they're kind of working their way towards the outside so we'll probably get rid of them by the end of the season as well although uh, it's not for a disease point of view it's not the best way but at least there'll be new frames that go into the winter um, yeah. which is when most of these things really kill off colonies I suppose is mm. the, f the way to put it I don't know you know um, because they have such a short lifespan anyway um, they tend to get over it in you know not not get over it but be able to more or less get by with losses in the summer but then in the winter of course when the queen is laying less and the bees are having to live longer sort of possibly up to six months rather than six weeks then anything that they do have is going to catch up with them before these new bees to replace them so you know that's what happens they die off in the winter um, but uh, yeah so far they seem to be fine oh come here darling you can't don't want to be down there. You'll get trodden on. That Daniel's a bugger for treading on bumblebees. Yeah. You just don't see them. <laughs> oh, you knew he did it. Is it one from? I don't know. It's 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 a white tail, but it's got no yellow markings on it at all. Oh, that could be one for Nicky Gammon. Hmm. But it's, I think one. it's a queen. All oh, right. Judging by the size of it. Oh. I saw that come down. But she was on those flowers literally just a minute ago. All yeah. oh, right. But uh, I, so, little one arm they put out. I know. It's like <laughs> help me, help me. Get away, or I'll sting you. That is actually. It was it. Yeah. All oh, right. That's I'm feeling threatened. So bugger off. Yeah. Put it on there. Oh, there you go. Back yeah. on there. She can fly. Yeah, she's just being lazy. Probably a bit cold. Mm. And give her a cuddle, Roger. Well, it has been known before. Yeah. When I first started keeping honeybees, the chap that was showing me had lavender on both sides of his front path, and it was I don't know, July, August when when this swarm arrived in the garden. And she's feeding away. She's obviously a bit hungry, um, and. Uh, he actually was, he cupped his hands like that around a, a lavender stem that was covered in bumblebees and just drew them all up in his hands like that. And he said, they, they, they really don't sting. And they didn't, but you know, it's not something I've ever done, but uh, oh. yeah, it did sort of show how oh, she's having a... kind of amiable they are. Do you want to say goodbye to our, our viewership? Well, goodbye to all, all of you and, and enjoy your beekeeping. I'll see you next week. And we'll see you next week. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoy what we do here at Mantle Farm. Don't forget to like and subscribe and to keep up to date with our latest videos here on YouTube.